James Averis for Fight News Australia here. Today I'm joined with Dan the Hangman Hooker. Dan, thank you very much for joining me. How are you and how is it today in Auckland? Uh, it's a beautiful Auckland day, pouring down with rain, but uh, <laughs> we're a bit used to it. Now we've had some good weather, so uh, I think we're, we're ready for winter to come. Yeah, sounds pretty typical of the Auckland weather. Um, so obviously, big fight announced for you recently. We'll get to that in a minute. But first, I want to hear about the new gym that you've, you're starting. When's it opening up? And can you provide me a few details of that? Yes, yeah, so I've got my, my own place. Uh, I'll be opening up. We should be open after my fight, the end of April, or looking at early May. Uh, so it's, a, it's in a place called Ellerslie in Auckland, so that's where I'm from, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited for it, you know, it's a, it's a big facility, uh, we've got, you know, competition size, cage, ring, it's a big place, it's about uh, seven, eight hundred square meters, so it's, it's, it's a big place. What's the name of it going to be? So it's called uh, the Combat Academy. Combat Academy, cool. And so, just to clarify, obviously, you're still with City Kickboxing, is that correct? You're not starting your own gym to be away, or how is that all working out? No, so, you know, City Kickboxing will still be my my team. You know, it would take, it would take 10 years to train, <laughs> to train fighters to the level of being able to be my, you know, current training partners. This is more just because I've, I've noticed, you know, the growth of the sport and the interest around combat sports, boxing, kickboxing, jiu-jitsu, and they're just, they're just going crazy over here. And there's so many, so many people that want to get involved. So this is kind of just starting a place where, you know, building it from the ground up where, where those people that, that have an interest in the sport, but they don't know where to start and they don't want to start at a fight gym. You know, this is, this is a place for everyone where, where, you know, everyone can, you know, enjoy the benefits of combat sport. Because just for myself, you know, I've learned there's so many good lessons that you learn and, and things you learn about yourself from being tested through combat sports. So, yeah, it's just, it's a place for everyone. City, as far as city kickboxing, you know, that's, that's my fight team. That's my fight camp. Uh, Eugene Behrman's my coach. Those are my training partners. Uh, they're 100% behind me. You know, I'll need other coaches at the gym and I'll, I'll kind of draw from city kickboxing and yeah eugene who owns city kickboxing and doug you know they've been big helps they give me they give me advice on on you know the directions to go so yeah i've got their their full blessing with the gym that's very cool and obviously running your own gym it's a big responsibility and it's a lot of work a lot of guys start gyms maybe at the end of their fight careers and you're really only in the midst of yours why, why have you decided to open it now and how do you expect to be able to juggle that with maintaining your fight career? Yeah, so I've had a few people say, you know, wait till you're uh, retired, but, you know, all things go well. I, I don't see myself retiring for another 10 years or so. And I've been, look, I've been in this sport a long time and I understand the, the highs and lows of the sport and the things that can happen uh, with injuries or or you know, you know, you can, you can, there are a lot of pitfalls in this industry. So I'm just setting something up, you know, for my future outside of the sport. You know, I, I love this sport and I'll be involved with it through the rest of my life, but I'm, I'm well aware of the dangers of the sport and that, you know, your career is not guaranteed, you know? So I'd like to have my future set up still within the sport but not in terms of fighting, you know, should, should anything happen. Now, you mentioned some of the dangers of the sport. Well, the first time I ever saw you compete, it was at a bit of a party at Strike Force Canterbury when I lived in Christchurch from my hometown <laughs> way back in the day. And uh, you were competing in what they called Kiwi Pride Rules. And you were about 86 kilos, taking on a guy who was 128 kilos. There were foot stomps. I think you nearly finished the guy with a kick to the head and there's also videos of you floating around fighting in tag team Muay Thai fights. When you look back on those days, what, what, what do you think? Do you think that was crazy sort of to do that sort of stuff or has it made you the fighter that you are now? A bit of both. Uh, it was just kind of, 
the goal I you know when I when I used to fight I I, I fought because I just I, I kind of had a chip on my shoulder and I just felt like I had something to prove so I wanted to prove you know how tough I was and and I just I like the excitement of uh, look I hate I hate 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 taking fights that I'm expected to win I don't think that that's it just doesn't get me up in the morning. I love I love taking fights that, that make you nervous and get you a bit excited. So, yeah, taking short notice heavyweight fights with no rules and tag team fights and fighting an eight-man, you know, those are just those are just things that I had to prove to myself. Uh, as a coach, I wouldn't advise it to my own fighters. I'd probably <laughs> tell them they're crazy and wouldn't allow them to do it. But that's more uh, do as I say, not as I do, I guess. <laughs> And obviously, that was obviously many years ago um, when you were at a different gym. When did you start training with Eugene? So I've been training with, with Eugene. as a, I started training with Eugene uh, as a training partner. I think it was just before I got in the UFC, probably, probably six months before I was in the UFC. So probably four and a half years training with Eugene. And I was just, it was just a training partner at that time because... One thing about Eugene is he's very unassuming. Uh, it takes, you know, uh, when you're young, you're, you're, you're attracted to, you know, bigger characters within the sport. You know, if someone's loud and they're telling you they're the best, when you're a young fighter, you're kind of drawn towards that. Whereas he's very unassuming and, you know, you kind of have to seek out his knowledge. So it took me a long time and it's only really been the last, uh, I would say, year and a half, two years since I've been back in New back and based in New Zealand full time that you know I've really committed to his system and uh followed his programs and that's you know that's shown dividends in my performances I think uh, you know my last few contests. And you really were the first guy fighting out of New Zealand to make it into the UFC. Obviously guys like Tahuna and Mark Hunt they did their training predominantly in Australia. And you did go to Tiger Muay Thai and Saigon Sports Club in Vietnam, but you mentioned that the last couple of years you have decided to base yourself in New Zealand. What, why, what made you decide to stay and train in New Zealand rather than going overseas to seeking out more training partners and the like? Well, you know, I just had to see for myself. Uh, I had to go and I had to travel the world and I had to go to these places and I had to you know, absorb that knowledge and see what it's all about. Uh, you know, Thailand was good. Southeast Asia was good. You know, even training uh, in the States with, with the Muscle Farm team and uh, Elevation Fight team. You know, it's all, it's all learning experience, but it made me appreciate the knowledge that we do have at home. Um, going all that way and, and, you know, training with all these world-class fighters and world-class coaches, it made me appreciate. And that, that kind of made me realize how intelligent my coaches were back in New Zealand, how good my training partners were back in New Zealand. So I know 100%, look, I'm a real facts-based guy, so I had to go and see for myself. Whereas you look at kind of Israel Adesanya, he's a, he, he gets this confidence, which he just kind of manufactures out of nowhere. Uh, but, you know, most fighters aren't, fighters aren't like that. You know, I had to go and I had to witness it for myself, which I did. So now when I'm training back in New Zealand, I have the full confidence that, you know, my team and my coaches are the best team and coaches for me in the entire planet. Do you feel with the success that guys like yourself and Israel and Kaikata France also, who I'm sure will be signed soon, is having training in New Zealand is really good for their young up-and-coming New Zealand fighters who do want to try and get into the sport and make their name? Yeah, uh, you know, it, it, of course it would be inspirational. It was, you know, UFC was not a goal of mine. It was not even, uh, I didn't even really consider it a possibility until I think Jamie Tahuna was the first Kiwi, Kiwi-born Kiwi fighter, you know, signed and competing in the UFC. And then until I saw he was signed and he was going to make his debut and fight in the UFC, that was kind of, you know, a light switch moment for me. So if, you know, watching Jamie Tahuna get signed and, and that does that for me, 
well then, you know, me training in New Zealand, they will do that for a lot of Kiwi fighters. So I'm sure it is, you know, inspirational just to show them that it is possible, 100%, and that are you, yeah, you've got no reason to, to doubt your training just because we're, we're, you know, we're in this small island in New Zealand. And you mentioned Israel Adesanya. Obviously, he's getting a lot of attention at the moment. He's been around the tracks for a long time, but now that he's got that notable win in the UFC, everyone's starting to take notice. How is he as a training partner for you, and how far do you think he's going to go in that middleweight division? Yeah, I think he's going to be the champ. Uh, you know, 100%. At some stage, you know, you can't, there's nothing guaranteed in the sport, uh, but he's a tough kid, even if he, you know, he, he enjoys the highs, he, know, he knows what he's doing, he's very focused, uh, there's no one working harder in the gym, like he's a very hard worker, very talented, uh, yeah, I see him uh, holding a middleweight title for sure. And your last fight against Mark D. Casey, I thought it was a really good performance by you. You looked really good again at lightweight, had your wits about you. Fighting in Vegas, I know in the lead up to the fight, you said you don't really think about these things. But looking back, you know, end of year card, Las Vegas, getting interviewed by Joe Rogan at the end. How special are these moments to you when you're looking back at what you've accomplished so far? Yeah, I don't know. If you've ever been to Vegas, Vegas is Vegas, bro. <laughs> I'm not too uh, dazzled by the lights. If I could fight every fight in Auckland and Spark Arena, I would. Or Australia, you know, that's a nice that's a nice holiday for me. But uh, I think America is just a bit too far for me. <laughs> and you did want to you did want to get on that Perth card. What happened there? Did you did did Sean Shelby not get in touch? Obviously, yeah, well, I started I started harassing Sean, you know, straight after that. And, uh, you know, he informed me that the card was already full. But if there, you know, if there was some kind of injury, then I, I could replace that fighter. So I was staying, you know, semi-ready. But uh, then he told me about this uh, April date. And he told me that he had something in mind for me. And, you know, a, a few different names went back and forth until it was only recently, a couple of weeks ago, that I finally got, you know, uh, the Jim Miller fight. Locked in. Were you happy when you got him as an opponent? Obviously, he's a really renowned fighter. He's fought in the UFC, I think over 20 fights. Big name. Are you happy with that as an opponent? Yeah. Oh, Jim Miller's a, a veteran of the sport, man. Uh, very exciting fight. It's another fight like the Ross Pearson fight where I have an immense amount of respect purely because I've been watching these guys since I started in the sport. So I've been watching... You know, Jim Miller has been at the elite level for such a long time. So to get the opportunity to compete against him is a yeah, it's a humbling experience, and it's a yeah, this is a this is a fight I want, hundred percent. And the fact that he's on a three fight losing skid doesn't discourage you. You're just happy to get in there anyway, and mix it up. If you have a three fight losing streak and a twenty eight fight UFC career, that's that's. That's pretty good. You know, there's guys that have one or two losses in the UFC get cut and walk around and tell everyone that they're UFC veterans. Uh, 28 fights. This will be his 29th fight in the UFC. He is as veteran as veterans get. I think our fight together uh, ties him for the most UFC fights of all time. So that, you know, it's a great accomplishment by him. So it'll be an honor to get in there uh, with him and, and, and set that record and how do you see yourself stylistically matching up with him? Uh, it's it's a tough fight, man. Jim Miller, Jim Miller is game. He always brings it. Uh, he's got a crazy amount of pace. He's very good takedowns, very good top game, very good jujitsu. Uh, I think outstrike him and defend the takedowns will be the you know the primary uh, goal of this fight. And with the win, will you really be looking for a top 15 opponent next? You would have three wins since coming into the lightweight division, which isn't easy to do at all. Would you be looking for someone who is at least on a winning streak in your next contest? Yeah, I think three fights. You know, I've got, I've got some good names, a prospect, and, and, and that'll be two veterans uh, on my record. So, yeah, I'm going to sit back and then 
wait till a name shows up in my email and it's got a little number next to it and then I'll I'll take I'll take one of those guys. And you're a guy who likes to stay busy. Are you happy with the amount of fights that you're getting in the UFC or would you like to have a few no. more? No, not at all. You want more? <laughs> it's ridiculous. Two fights a year for oh man. It's ridiculous. I'd fight, you know, five or six times if they would let me, but it's just not it's just not happening. So you know, I do a lot of stuff outside of fighting, so you have to keep yourself busy. You know, I'm, 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 I hate being bored. It's probably my biggest fear is boredom. So I like to stay busy. So, you know, people ask me, oh, are you ready to start a gym? You know, as a, as a fighter, you have a lot of downtime. So this is, this is something that, you know, gets me up in the morning and gets me going. And obviously you make that quite known to Sean Shelby and all these guys that you want to fight a lot more and they just can't get you the fights. How does that all operate? Just, yeah. Oh, it's just, I oh, look, I've been, after every fight, I get straight back the next week and I start nagging again. And it just, yeah, after years and years, you know, it, it just doesn't happen. So two fights a year seems to be what, what they've got me on. And for the last four years, that's, that's what's been going on. So... How can I expect uh, anything to change, you know? How excited would you be if the UFC created some sort of eight-man tournament for one night with Dan Hooker involved? Would that make you more excited than anything? If they made an eight, eight-man, no rules, uh, <laughs> handicap match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's something that would get me out of bed. <laughs> um, so last question from me. I know you've probably got other stuff to go and do, but... Fighting at lightweight, you're obviously, you look far healthier on the scales. Like, I've seen you in person on the scales at featherweight and at lightweight. Now that you are eating well and all that, how much better is that for you in your fights? Yeah, well, it was just, uh, you know, it's a physical thing. Uh, you know, my mind has always been strong. I've always been, like, very mentally strong. So... It's hard, it's hard for me to gauge that until, you know, I did start moving back up to lightweight and, and feeling a lot better. Because, to be honest, like, I'm so mentally strong, I could have a bone sticking out of my arm, broken arm on fight day, and you ask me how I'm going, I'm going to tell you I feel like a million bucks. And honestly, I will convince myself that I do feel like a million bucks. You know, the mind is, is your most powerful weapon. So, I could... I could block all of that out, but it's hard to deny the performances and, and the shift in performance from featherweight to lightweight. And you reckon you'll be able to string a lot more wins together at lightweight? Obviously, you're a fit win, loss, win, loss in the lead up, but you've strung a couple of wins together now. It must be really satisfying to really start getting the run going. You're starting to enter your prime, do you feel? I do feel like I am, you know, just starting to move towards my prime. Every, each fight camp, I'm just feeling better and better. You know, we track everything. You know, my weights are going up. My, my, you know, my times on everything are going down. Like, everything, everything is tracking. And every camp, I feel even better than the, than the previous camp. Uh, that's adjustments with, with my coaches that are making adjustments for my training. So, yeah, I just seem to be getting better and better. But it's, it's the... It's the nature of the beast, you know, nothing is guaranteed in the sport. So you have to, you know, for me, I have to remain humble and, and focused on each fight and, and take them one at a time. You know, nothing's guaranteed. I can't look forward to, oh, I'm going to do this, this and this. I have to take it one at a time and I have to, you know, I've got Jim Miller in front of me and he's one of the best fighters in the world. Uh, and I'm going to have to focus on him just to get to that next step. Awesome, Dan. I really appreciate your time. Good luck with your fight against Jim Miller on, in Atlantic City on April 22nd, New Zealand and Australian time. So best of luck, Dan. I really appreciate you joining me today. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it.